Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, thanks a lot for being here. Hope that you're all doing well. I know this is a very challenging time, just very turbulent uh, situation out in the world at the moment. And I want to do just a quick chat today about uh, just another thing that I've thought about that you might want to consider um, doing while you're home, self-isolating and uh, you know keeping away from uh, the world outside. Um, I know that's uh, it's difficult. You know, you can only, only do so much knitting and crafting and you, then you start to feel like, um, you know, I really would like to be doing something a little more substantial here, being of help. And lots of people are finding amazing things to do. And I'm just so impressed and respectful of, uh, you know, the, the the love that a lot of women in our community are putting towards this uh, this situation and uh, do, just doing their best to make a difference. But um, I wanted to talk to you today, though, about something uh, quite interesting uh, that I've come across in, you know, in, my, in my research as to what to do to keep uh, useful and, and productive. And um, one of our bloggers, Delia Lloyd, wrote an article that kind of just kind of went along with my research. And that was this whole idea of virtual volunteering. Now, we have written some articles about this topic. You perhaps read them on the website, but I want to just talk them through because I think that um, my own experience and my own uh, research that I've done might add some, you know, just ele elements you haven't thought about. Now, as I mentioned, we've done a couple of articles on things to do while you're home alone. And the list is, uh, is long and beautiful. It's a time to be thoughtful about what you love to do, what your passions are, and how you can match your talents and your skills with what you know what's out there what's needed and you know we talked about uh, virtual travel and about going listening to TED talks that would enrich you and inspire you uh, talked about taking courses even doing a life review lots of different things that might uh, help you to just center yourself in this in this crazy time but also it's time maybe to look at what's good for the community because I think Helping others always helps us feel good ourselves. And uh, so Delia talks about this whole idea of um, the value of volunteering um, as we age in general. And point, she points to all the, um, you know, the, the data that shows it is something that helps you stay healthy and well to have a purpose in, in your life. And that social engagement, albeit virtual, which is why this idea of virtual volunteering is kind of interesting. And she mentions, by the way, that, um, you know, we are you know, older women and we, you know, we, they say that, you know, we're at high risk in this whole issue with COVID-19. But I've come across some really strong, amazing women um, in their 60s. And I think that we are made for this. I really think that um, our happiness, um, Delia points it out, the happiness factor, like after 40, it kind of plateaus. And then it just keeps getting better after that, because we're appreciative of life. We want to keep it um, you know, close to us, we want to be healthy and well. And I just hope that that's that everyone's doing okay. So virtual mentoring is what Delia talks about. And she says, you know, become a mentor. You've spent years doing things, you've got lots of skills. And she talks about her own experience of mentoring a younger journalist um, when she worked at the BBC, um, and how she didn't just touch on the work issues, it was life issues. And so mentoring is a really wonderful way to reach out. And one way you could do this is to go onto LinkedIn. And I don't know of any agencies, like our mentoring agencies. There probably are some. Maybe you know a few. But if you go onto LinkedIn and look at your contacts, you will see a lot of co-workers, people that you worked with um, who are younger, and you could just reach out to them, you know, and say, how are you doing? Um, and they may come back and say, oh, you know, I, I'm not working right now and I'm really worried about this or that. And you can coach them. You can mentor them. You can just say, hey, would you be interested in me giving you some support? And I think you'll be really pleasantly surprised how much people will say, yes, that would be great. And um, so another thing that she talks about is uh, teaching a language. And there are some of those programs where you can uh, go online, uh, teach virtually, like, you know, if you speak uh, English and someone in Brazil wants to speak English and you want to speak Spanish, or is it, what, and no, wait a minute, what do they speak in, in Brazil? That wasn't a good example, but you know, French, uh, you can actually, um, you know, do that uh, just across Skype or FaceTime. It's just amazing what the technology will enable you to do. Um, also, from my research, I found a couple of sites that were really, really cool. Um, and there are things like Reading for the Blind. 
If you have a reasonable voice and you love to read, uh, they're always looking for readers. And then there's another one, LibriVox, I think it's called, where you can volunteer to read books that are, um, you know, slightly older, that are out of the public domain. And uh, there are usually books that are written, you know, maybe before, maybe 50 years ago. And you find some interesting perspectives. I was looking at some of the books that you had a choice to read. But that's another reading thing you could do. You can do all kinds of things with volunteering with related to the virus and, and face masks and other support groups that are out there to help people. But I think, you know, this this particular topic though about virtual volunteering and mentoring is the one that I wanted to focus on today because it's so, it's so perfect for people like us, women who have years of experience and then can match ourselves with a younger person or uh, you know someone that needs just some moral support with their work or their, their career. Another thing she mentions, though, in terms of, you know, away from like the more sort of social things is, is that campaigning for something you believe in. And there are so many, uh, you know, different threads we could go here with this. I won't mention any because we try to keep it calm and non-political here. But, you know, if it's um, maybe the, the environment or climate or, you know, they're controversial too. You know, there are things that you might believe in. It might be something to do with um, oh, fast fashion and how, you know, how it's ma manufactured or um, plastic um, issues, you know, with plastic uh, uh, waste. There's all kinds of projects and campaigns and things that you believe in that uh, that you know you could do work for, and that would be really really cool too. Lots of online ways that you can support your cause. So, at the end of the day, what Odelia is talking about is something I think it's just pretty magical for older women, and that is wisdom. You know what? That's what we've got to offer, and it's not got anything to do with you know, what we, how, what, what we can do or our skills or our degree. It's really just the way we can apply that to someone's life who's just not there yet because they haven't lived it. They're younger. They're, they're on the journey. And I do think, um, that this uh, experience with the coronavirus, COVID-19 is really an opportunity to share the wisdom of older women. You know, we have been there. We have done. We've gone through many, many different tra um, tragedies sometimes, and and ups and downs in society. We've been, we've lived through things, and I think our wisdom is really worth sharing. And we want to listen. We want to help. And I think that that's perhaps where the future of uh, virtual volunteering could actually even be extended further than mentoring. That it's well, it is mentoring in a way. It's almost like you know, let's let's get a perspective here from someone who's lived through the Cold War, lived through uh, you know maybe uh, my memory of my mom's experience of World War II, and just the things that happened as a result of that, and how we can just share our our losses and our 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 gains and the, the the wisdom that we've achieved over the years. So anyway, I think that it's a really virtual volunteering, mentoring, coaching. It's just a wonderful way. It can be very informal. It doesn't have to be, you know, a job or paid for. Just go out and, and find people uh, that you know that might need some support and just offer your your wisdom and your and your and your you know knowledge. So it's about, I guess, as you get older, cultivating an interest in someone beyond yourself. It's an altruism that I think is hopefully where we're going to come out at this end of all of this, that we'll have a more compassionate world, more compassionate society, and that will be that will be a value to everybody. I really do hope. So do you volunteer? Where do you volunteer? What do you do? I'd really like to know if you've discovered any volunteer, virtual volunteer opportunities uh, that you want to share with us. That would be great. Let's keep this conversation going. I'd like to talk about this topic a lot because I think uh, even though we love knitting and we love doing our crafts and we love <laughs> all the things that we're home alone doing right now, um, let's maybe think of something that's more contributing to the society and the world as a whole. I think it's powerful. So have a great day wherever you are. Tell us about what your volunteering experiences and what, what virtual discoveries you might have made. And I look forward to reading your comments and joining in. And again, thank you so much for being here. Stay safe and stay well. And uh, we're here to support you uh, any way that we can. So take good care. Bye-bye for now.